Hi, I'm Bernhard Klingenberg, Professor of Statistics. This is a short video that I'm creating for the first week of my introductory statistics class to explain the impact of randomness and variability in statistics. In particular, I want to show how statistics that are computed from samples may vary, and that statistics is really about quantifying such variability. Now, let's look at an example for which I have to change my screen, so hold on. So suppose there's a student government election, uh, and there's only two candidates to choose between, William and Diana. Now, if you ask the entire student body, then 55% of them say they're gonna vote for Diana, which means that Diana has a 55% chance of winning in the entire population of students. Now, if only a few students show up, such as typically is the case for student election, if only a few students show up to the election and vote, Will Diana actually win the election, or are there scenarios where could, she could lose, although she, in the entire population, seems to have a 55% chance of winning? Let's explore this with an app. Go to the website artofstat.com. Going, going there right now. Artofstat.com. Artofstat.com. And then click on Web Apps. These are just a couple of apps I've created to do that are useful for the introductory statistics course. Now for this very first exploration, we're just going to scroll down all the way uh, until we see an app called the sampling distribution for the sample proportion. Click on that app, which will bring up a new window. And in that window, you're going to see two sliders. The first one titled population proportion. This is really in our example. This is for the proportion of students who are gonna vote for Diana, which I think we said is 55%. So I'm gonna grab the slider and move it over to 55%. Now we can actually give, by default, those are just labels zero and one for failure and success. We actually can provide labels. I think we call uh, a zero, uh, a William and a success a vote for Diana, so that now Diana has a 55% chance of success. So that's sort of illustrated in that chart. Now the P here, the half circle for P, that sort of is supposed to represent the 55% that's in the middle, that's in between zero and 100%. The second slide is for the sample size. These are the number of students who show up to vote. Now let's keep it at 50. Suppose only 50 students show up to vote at, at, uh, at the student election. What are the types of outcomes we can expect from such a vote? To simulate that, I'm gonna press the draw sample button here. This will randomly simulate what will happen if 50 students show up to vote. And in fact, uh, the, the entire student body has a 55% chance of voting for the AM. So in this particular sample I drew, we have out of those 50 showing up to vote, 29 successes, a success here is a vote for Diana, and 21 failures, a failure here means a vote for William. Now 29 out of 50, that's 0.58 or 58%. So we say the sample proportion for the sample of 50 students was 58% or 0.58. And that's denoted by the blue triangle here. And it is slightly above the 55% we assumed in the entire population. Now that's the result of one vote. I said statistics is about variability, and I want to show you how statistics such as this proportion, the sample proportion, vary. Uh, I'll just click on draw sample again. So this time, 28 out of 50 for a proportion of 0.56 or 56% voted for Diana. She'll still have a majority. Well, let's do another vote here, 45%, and here only 44%. So 22 successes out of 50, that's 44% voted for Diana. For this particular election, for this particular set of 50 students showing up, she would actually lose the election because she doesn't have the majority. So that's a possibility. Now, when I say I want to explain variability, look how the blue triangle here hovers around or varies around the proportion of 55% here as I keep on generating different samples. Sometimes it's here, the sample proportion comes to life below 55%. Sometimes it's almost right on top of 55%. Sometimes it's slightly below, 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 below. Sometimes it's above, then above again, then slightly below. Do you see how the same proportion varies around some other value? 
So that's what I mean by statistics vary. And that's due to the nature of taking random samples from a population. You're not always getting the same value. We get different values. And the last plot here keeps track of all the different values we got, of all the proportions we got. Um, and to speed up the process to see sort of what proportions are reasonable, uh, let's simulate 1,000 or maybe even 10,000 student elections. And then you see most of those proportions end up to be around 55%. Well, a good chunk of them actually fall below 50%. And all these would be cases where Diana would actually lose the election. Now, we assumed only 50% of, uh, sorry, 50 students show up to vote. That's really low. What if this is 100? So I'm gonna grab the slider for the sample size and then move it to 100 to see what would happen uh, if 100 students show up, um, which is more realistic for, uh, perhaps. And what you see is, Potential values you can get, they shrunk a little bit, right? They're not as low or as high as they were before, but still a good portion, proportion, right, falls below 55%. So there's still a good chance that Diana might lose the election if only 100 students show up. Now, maybe 100 is too small. Suppose 500 students show up to vote. Well, then what you see is that, that the range of values just got much more narrower. And now really only very few proportions ended up to be below 50%. So now, right, with a 500 students showing up for the election, it's pretty certain that Diane is gonna win the election, gonna get the majority. Uh, if the increase is to 1,000, then you see it even getting smaller. Now, so what I was gonna show to sum up with this uh, is just the fact that proportions vary and that depends on the sample size. If only 10 students show up, I can get a proportion as low as 20% or even 10% and as high as 90%. Whereas, and, and anything in between, whereas if a thousand students show up, then I get proportions that vary only over a very narrow range. We'll quantify this later. We'll use terms such as margin of error, which you might have heard before, but that's to come. Now, if you want to read up on this, then you can go to the textbook. In chapter one, there's an activity that describes what I did here in this video. Um, so if you go to the uh, textbook, go to chapter one and then go to page 14, there's an activity that sort of mimics what we just did. There's a screenshot included here in figure 1.2 and the activity two discusses what I did on the screen. Now this ends the video. So this was all about using simulation, using the app to understand randomness, how the proportion varied when taking samples, random samples, um, uh, how to understand randomness and variability.